Directed by Tina Garabi and narrated by Jada Pinkett Smith, Queen Cleopatra is the latest Netflix docudrama release starring Adele James in the titular role. As the series releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to talk about the series, explain the ending and discuss all the hidden details and historical or mythological references. But before that, a spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the series. So if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you are at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The documentary starts with an interview stating the fact that her grandparents convinced her that the strongest woman ruler from the African nation was black, and how Western history whitewashes our knowledge of her by depicting a hypothetical historical figure that was white in skin color because she was one of the most desired and beautiful women of that time period. The series then takes us to 51 BC, the great library of Alexandria, and we get to know about Cleopatra's family line that originally came from Macedonia. The Ptolemies have been ruling Egypt since 323 BC and the historians depict her as a learned scientist and linguist woman. When her father Ptolemy XII dies, she and her younger brother Ptolemy XIII mutually ascend to the throne. In ancient Egypt, the practice of sibling marriages was popular in the royal family as the rulers were seen as gods. They were depicted as Isis and Osiris reborn. Isis was the daughter of the earth god Jeb and the sky goddess Nun, and the sister of the deity Osiris. She was also the wife of Osiris, god of the underworld, and bore him a son, Horus. The first part of the story is quite similar to Pluto and Proserpine from Roman mythology. The first Ptolemy was the general of Alexander the Great and he started ruling Egypt in 323 BC, which is another Greek connection. Isis had great powers such as healing, protection and magic. She could even cast spells on Ra, which shows her powers and depicts the importance Egyptian people give to their queens. Osiris is also the god of fertility, agriculture, the afterlife, the dead, resurrection, life and vegetation in ancient Egyptian religion. But said the god of disorder murdered his brother Osiris, the god of order. Yet Isis was able to bring him back for one night after his death. We also get to see the siblings exchanging a helm with two snakes and their ornaments had two snakes too. Usually seen in conjunction with Nekbet, the vulture goddess of Upper Egypt, Wajjad, the cobra goddess of Lower Egypt. Together they are called the two ladies and represent the unification of the upper and lower part of the country. Both goddesses served as protectors of the pharaoh, while the role of vulture goddess like Nekbeth is usually motherly, the role of the cobra goddess is an apotropic protector, using the cobra's dangerous properties against itself. Cleopatra tries to win the people over and goes on a pilgrimage to Thels, while the eunuch Puthinus manipulates her husband slash brother Ptolemy XIII and secretly tries to murder Cleopatra when they try to oppose Pompey the Great from Rome, who was a frequent collaborator of their father. Cleopatra prefers the diplomatic way, but she runs back to Syria and stays there for quite some time using her diplomatic immunity. When Pompey arrives in Egypt, Puthinus has him killed, which enrages his father-in-law Julius Caesar. But Cleopatra calms him down with her company and makes him reinstate her on the throne. He decides to give Arsinoe a meager land to rule, so she retaliates and a complete civil war breaks out in Egypt. Arsinoe and Ptolemy XIII lost the battle and he lost his life by falling into the water while fleeing. He was wearing a golden armor at that time which caused his death and it has a certain connection with Osiris and his untimely death. Anyway, Cleopatra was bearing Caesar's child at the time and she regained the throne but she left Arsinoe with Caesar to execute her betraying sister, but Caesar betrayed her trust instead. She names her son Caesarian or Little Caesar and she learns that Arsinoe is still alive. Thus she visits Rome and tries to convince Caesar to accept Caesarian as his heir. The Senate members like Caesario do not acknowledge a woman ruler and it creates a huge contention between the members. Cleopatra helps Caesar build a library and a solar calendar and in return he builds a statue depicting a cross between Isis and Venus which looks exactly like Cleopatra. But he never does the most important job that is acknowledge his heir. The next time Cleopatra visits Rome, we can see her and her son playing and the next shot shows us a falcon. 
It symbolizes Horus, also known as Hiru or Hor in ancient Egyptian, and is one of the most significant ancient Egyptian deities who served many functions, most notably as the god of kingship, healing protection, the sun and the sky. He is also the son of Isis, which creates a great parallel between the two characters. Anyway, soon Caesar gets killed and Mark Antony helps her flee. Upon returning, as she learns that her second brother slash husband has been conspiring with Arsinoe, she kills him and assumes the position of a singular ruler in Egypt. Later, she goes to meet Mark Antony dressed as the goddess Venus and manipulates him into submitting to her wishes. Upon learning this, Caesar's heir Octavian gets enraged and starts marching towards her country. All this while a massive civil war breaks out in Rome between the supporters of Caesar and the conspirators who killed him. Meanwhile, Cleopatra assassinates Arsinoe and she becomes the undisputed queen of Egypt. Cleopatra becomes pregnant with Antony's child but sends him back to Rome to claim his forgotten respect. To gain Octavian's support, he marries Octavia, his sister, but as he attempts to win Parthia, aka the modern day Iraq, he needs help and summons Cleopatra. They mend their differences and Antony meets his twin kids for the first time. He named them Helios and Selene. Helios is the Greek equivalent of Ra, the sun god, and Selene is the moon god in Greek. With these names, they wanted to respect their respective cultures through Ptolemy Greco-Roman Egyptian offsprings. Cleopatra then clears her demands and Antony accepts them all, including naming Caesarian as the true heir of Caesar. He accepts the demands and marries Cleopatra in return for gaining her army and her supplies. Then he goes to war against Parthia once again but loses and returns to Egypt. He even divorces Octavian's sister which enrages the general. Meanwhile, Cleopatra and Octavian engage in a full-fledged naval war in Actium. Some of the Roman allies join Octavian because they did not like the idea of a woman ruler. With failing strategies, Cleopatra retreats from the battle with her ships, which results in the massive destruction of Antony's fleet. She even tries to make a treaty with Octavian, whose spokesperson orders her to kill Antony. However, she does not follow the order and soon her country gets attacked by a massive army under Octavian. Her walls get breached and she decides to hide in her tomb along with all her possession that Octavian was after. But unfortunately, Mark Antony attempted to commit suicide after receiving a note from Cleopatra and he died in Cleopatra's arms. Octavian then arrests her and plans to march her in the Roman streets along with her children to display his triumph over Egypt. But Cleopatra chooses to commit suicide and pass away on her own terms. Octavian might have cremated her body along with Mark Antony to stop her followers from standing against the Roman Empire under her tomb. He took the kids to Rome but executed Caesarion. Selene, on the other hand, was married to Juba of Mauritiana, another African ruler, and named her son Ptolemy. Through her Cleopatra and her family's legacy lived on, Selene becomes the moon of her life that silently reflects the light of Ra in the darkest time. As after Cleopatra, Egypt becomes a colony of Rome and she stands as the last independent monarch and pharaoh of the country. The docudrama is not as interesting as other Netflix ventures, some performances are lackluster and the music choice for me does not work at all with the story. There are no independent findings from the researchers of the series and it does not show us any other unknown side of the mystical monarch. It felt a bit preachy at points but the story is indeed powerful and resonates with us quite well. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video, do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Queen Cleopatra on Netflix, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the timing we are signing off, Miles Salama, I am Isis and I will be back.